Um, I'm Kim Sandberg, and with me today is... I'm Johnny Barfus. Christina Whitney. We're all studio educators here at Handy Quilter. Well, today we've got something kind of fun, right? Yes. We're, we're starting a new, I guess you could say, kind of segment. We occasionally get questions from quilters out there, right? Just occasionally. Just occasionally. We get a lot of questions, Daily. you guys. Um, so here is a, a recent question that we got, and we want to answer it today. This is our new segment called Quilting Conundrums. Um, the letter says, Dear Handy Quilter Studio Educators, I am stuck in a rut with my quilting. I want to try new things, but I'm afraid I'll mess up. Help! Sincerely stuck in a rut quilter. So, this is a real problem, right? Yep. We get comfortable doing the same things all the time and we're scared to try new things. We're afraid we're going to, mess heaven up. forbid, ruin mess a quilt, up. mess up. <laughs> so we thought the best way to answer this question is to show you some of the things that we've tried that have worked and haven't worked, right? Yep. Spoiler alert, yes. mine did not work. <laughs> so stay tuned. Stay tuned. We're gonna we're gonna ask for some help for Johnny today too. Yes. But we want to show you some of the things that we've tried when we've got stuck in a rut, kind of what that rut was, and maybe give you some ideas about how to challenge yourself to try something new. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that this is a little bit more about inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just giving you that extra little boost to move forward, advance mm -hmm. a little bit rather than just seeing what we've actually done. Right. So yeah, we're going to be your motivation today. Yes. yes. I like and that. I, I think like personally, I've loved the last like couple of years here in this department, especially because yeah. we've just played a lot. You know, mm -hmm. we've just done things that are I definitely done things that I wouldn't have done. Oh, so yeah. it's been really fun. So I hope you'll do the same thing. But keep let's keep going. Yeah. OK, so for me, I am not a really big piecer. Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise. Um, I don't really do applique work or hand work. So I was in a group and they came up with this chicken pattern mm -hmm. and I looked at it and I thought, it's not speaking to me. <laughs> Nothing against the pattern, it's a fabulous pattern, but it just wasn't my personal style. Right. But it had those techniques that I wasn't very good at. Mm. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do this quilt. I don't really care what it looks like in the end, but I wanna learn those new skills. Okay. So I didn't put a lot of money into it. Mm -hmm. Everything in the quilt was just some scraps that I had, just <laughs> stuff I had laying around. And like I said, I didn't really care what it looked like in the end. I just wanted to improve my skills. Gotcha. So this is the quilt. Oops. Such a fun quilt. And it's my, my chicken quilt. And you'll notice I did some hand work and it's um, all raw edge applique. And I I haven't even stitched over the raw edges. The extent of my stitching, <laughs> I got really lazy by the end, was just my long arm quilting that I did over the top. So, and, and that was a totally new technique for you to try though, right? Yeah, like so, I, yeah, I didn't okay. usually do stuff like this. Um, but when I got the quilt top done, again, you know, it just wasn't super special to me. Like right. some of those quilts you just love and yes. you want to put a lot of time and effort, you don't want to mess it up. This is one that I didn't really care if I messed up. Mm -hmm. And so it gave me that freedom to play with it. Mm. So I decided to try something new. And I wanted to make the barbed wire look like metal. Right. So I chose some threads that a lot of people are scared of. Oh, yeah. So I've got <laughs> a metallic thread here. And I also have a glitter thread. Now, why are people afraid of these threads? They are a little bit finer thread, and mm -hmm. sometimes they need a little bit more TLC when you're doing their tension. Okay. It's not that you can't use them, but you right. do have to be aware that you do need to adjust your tension and maybe go a little bit slower okay. and not expect it to um, be quite as strong as like one of your heavier threads. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't decide which one I wanted, though. Right. Because which one looks more like metal to you guys? Oh. I think the far right one. They're they the both wait, which right? You're right. Sorry, the glitter. The glitter. glitter. The glitter. Yeah. They okay. both they both definitely have a metallic quality. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, for your chicken coop wire. Yeah. I don't know. I couldn't decide. Yeah. So what did I do? Both. You use both of them, right? I use both threads <laughs> together. I love it. In the same needle. So I put them on my horizontal spool pins. I had one on each of my um, thread stands. Mm -hmm and wound them through 
I didn't put as much tension on them. And they're, they're two different threads, so they yeah. require different tension. So I did have to play with it quite a bit. Right. Um, but I put them both through the same needle. Right. And I stitched out this barbed wire. And it has, the glitter gives it a little bit of sparkle, so it looks yeah. like the actual metal. Right. Um, or wire. It does. It really so, does. Yeah. So even though the, the quilt itself didn't really talk to me, once I added that thread, mm -hmm. which I had no idea if it was going to work or not. Right. But once I did it and I played with it, I really, really like how it turned out. So, and now you, I know I can do right. two threads together. I can do metallic and glitter. Yeah, and two specialty threads. Yeah. Not even just two threads, two mm -hmm. specialty threads. Yep. Oh, so. Yeah, the effect you got is amazing. I it looks really good. Totally agree. It, it, it almost looks like you stitched it with wire. Right. Don't you think? <laughs> yeah, chicken wire. Yeah. Yep. It it's is. it's awesome. So so your your uh, trial here was a success. You call it, yours a success. I would say this one turned out much better than I had planned on. Like I planned on just playing with it and then tossing it out, but yeah. I I've, I've kept it. You've kept it. So you're gonna awesome toss it out. <laughs> well, maybe not toss it out, but give it away. Or... Okay, so I know I've shared this before on yeah. other videos, but. It was meant to go into my sister's chicken coop. Oh, Because right. it's, it's designed really fancy. They have a, right. claw, a claw foot tub in there. <laughs> oh, my got gosh. A so I thought they needed a chicken wall hanging, but um, she hasn't gotten it yet. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't know if I'd be able wow. to part with this one either. Yeah, so oh, we'll, cool we'll see what happens. It's super cute. It is super, super cute. So, oh, so I know you awesome. did stuff with yeah. Fred also. Yeah. I When we were talking about this, and um, Fred is what actually came cute. to mind. So I brought in this quilt and it is, it's a huge quilt, king size quilt. And it's one that I have a lot of colors in it. It goes uh, kind of rainbow. So it goes from white all the way down, all the different colors in it. And I wanted to just quilt an edge to edge on this because it's gonna go on my bed. Um, there's a lot of print in the fabrics, but I wanted the threads to not be the same all the way across. I wanted them to blend a little more. So you can see, um, like it, right here where it's white, I'm using like a white thread and then an off white thread. And then down here, you can see, I, I actually would stop and change my thread color as I was stitching. I know, which is crazy. <laughs> I had never wow. done something like that before. I, I think this edge to edge took me like three days to stitch out because it, it was, I stitched three or four patterns and I'd have to switch. And I was happy with the results mostly. I mean, I didn't love that I ended up in some of these spots, but I wasn't going to come up here and stitch this and come back and change my thread and stitch the next <laughs> spot, right? That would be a lot. That's a little crazy, <clears throat> yeah. right? So overall, I was happy with this, but I figured I could probably do something better. I, I think I have a tendency to make projects that have a lot of different colors in them all together. So we'll just put this one back here. So <clears throat> next, I had another one, and this was one that we actually did for a, a class that Christina and I taught. But if you want to do matchstick quilting like I love to do, especially these rulers are so great, our matchstick line grid ruler is on sale this week for 15% off. But uh, I'd always heard Monopoly was a little crazy. And for those of you that don't know what Monopoly is, so it's a clear, it's a clear thread um, from Superior, and it's a monofilament um, polyester thread. Did I say that right? Yep. I think I did. Yeah. And this is a thread that has a reputation for being a little difficult. Yeah. I think it's a good way to say it. A lot of people are scared of it. But I thought with, with this quilt here, I've got all these different colors. I was stitching it out in Pro Stitcher once again. I have designs like this spot right here. This is one block that was stitched out. And I wanted a thread color that would just blend and leave the texture and not have to change my thread color constantly. So I used the Monopoly over this whole thing. And it has been the perfect solution. It's actually kind of turned into a joke around the studio, hasn't it now? Yeah. What do I call everything with? Monopoly. Monopoly. Yeah. So that was my that was my fun trying something new, challenging myself just like you did, trying a thread that I never had used before to get to get this kind of a result. So try something new, try a thread. Can I add to that? Yeah, absolutely. Monopoly? And and also with any type of thread. Um, don't try just like one brand of metallic yes. and if it doesn't work, give up on it. Mm -hmm. There are many different brands out there and they yes. have different qualities. Yes. Right. And so find one that is a high quality that is going to work for you. Um, I know this is a superior brand, yeah. Monopoly. The ones that I used were superior brand as yeah. well. 
Um, it doesn't have to be superior no. brand, but that's one that I found that worked well for me. That works well, yeah. No, I totally agree. I think one of the important things is, uh, we, we, and we hear this all the time in the studio, don't we, where somebody says, oh, my machine only likes one type of thread. Well, if you only use one type of thread, it only likes one type of thread. But if you try something new mm -hmm. and something as simple as trying a different thread, yeah, it can really change things up, Maybe right? you like one kind of thread. That's right. what I say. Right, exactly. Um, and one other tip with that, if you are gonna try new threads, I wouldn't recommend trying them on a really, really important quilt right. that you're really attached to. Oh, Put on like, a chicken quilt. And like play. trying a technique that you've used on a yeah. quilt that you're yes. attached to? Yeah, so Johnny. Oh, that's a good segue. segue. Way that's to a really go. good segue. All start right. small, start on a scrap. <laughs> Let's look at what Johnny's got. Oh, I was here. gonna bring my little scrap in. I forgot. Oh well. Sorry. Okay. So I uh, we're gonna talk color play first. So yes. there are several quilts hanging here in the studio, hanging in our studio that were they use color play. So mm -hmm. what is color play? And Vicky would always describe it as this hot, hot yellow mm -hmm. behind and then a white over the top. Right. And this this is very fairly thin. Right. So it allows that yellow to show through when it's quilted down. So this is the kind of just the example. Well, I'm going to go to my phone now and I'm going to show you what I had created. Um, I This is the whole thing. This is the whole quilt. And I had been playing a lot with um, half square triangles. Mm -hmm. And I really just like, these are like my favorite colors, turquoise, lime, navy blue, you know, I love that colorway. And so I laid out, I made out this quilt top and I just love the visual aspect, you know, the visual of it, right? Right. But then I got this idea of putting that hot yellow behind because I saw, I saw these color play quilts, you know? Yeah. That I thought, okay, I want to try that on my own. So I did that and I did some pretty intense. So, so Johnny, let's just explain that really quick. So when you loaded it, you actually loaded that yellow fabric that we see right there at the yeah. top underneath the quilt top. Yeah. So there it is. On top of the batting. Right? That's like, that's like a yeah. pretty good close up of, it is. I don't have like a really good shot of exactly what we did. I mean, that's, that's it though. Yeah. So you can see, um, there's the leader, there's pins, there's batting. There's fluorescent yellow fabric, and then there's my quilt top over the top. Mm -hmm. So I just laid that fluorescent yellow, mm -hmm. and I, mean, I got the brightest one I could find here in town, you know. Yeah. And then I started quilting, and I used the um, matchstick ruler, yeah. so the eighth inch, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, so it's tiny, tiny quilting, and it took me forever because I didn't want. So this is what I used a ruler, and I wanted that look of these color triangles to kind of pop mm -hmm. and then the quilting to be like radiating out from there. So I'll just show you a more, a few more progress pictures. There's like the picture of the quilting. There's like a up, up close picture. So I was really liking it. Oh, <laughs> so when I got done, this was in the very center. Can you see that there? And this One of our hot. bosses walked by and said, I just had my new dog, Buster. She said, did Buster pee on that quilt? <laughs> and I was so mad. And I was like, no, but I don't know why it did that. Yeah. And I'm sure maybe someone with more something knowledge of fabric and batting and whatever. Yeah, there's a good close up of that. Yeah. So, so the yellow just showed through a lot more in that one section. In one spot. spot in the very center. center. <laughs> Maybe it was Buster. <laughs> I promise that Buster did not, I was gonna put a picture of Buster in there so we couldn't blame him. But everything else was looking so amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at those pictures. I, I loved it. I love, love, loved it. Except for that very center. So yeah, when I pulled it off the frame, that's what I got was this big, huge P spot right in the middle. <laughs> And I spent hours, I mean, you guys, that frame, oh, the yeah. quilt was mm -hmm. on the frame, and anyway, I did it here. Yeah. So then I had the brilliant idea. Yeah. To take it home and? To take it home, and I was gonna try dyeing it. Mm -hmm. So I thought I could dye it a gray, and maybe I could get it to like ombre out from the center. Yes, yeah, so that's that's a picture of the quilt. So in that's the dye when bucket, it's in right? the dye bath. You guys, I really love dyeing. Um, <laughs> this is what came out. 
<laughs> oh my. <laughs> but you you do have a little bit of that ombre effect going on. It's darker in the center, lighter as it goes out. That's very I'm giving you kudos. That's very generous of you to <laughs> say that would be an ombre effect. So oh. just hot mess after hot mess. So then I thought, well, I'm just gonna bleach it. And oh, wow. Well, that evened it out some more. Oh, no, this is even, a, I think this is even before bleaching. Oh, my. Maybe. So I'm going to show you the quilt, the final quilt now. Where, where it's ended up Where at. it ended up here. Um, so. <laughs> Let's take a look at this quilt. It's funny. I, oh, I used that RIT color remover. Oh. That's right. what I did. And I just put it everywhere. So <laughs> it. So I removed the color from everything. Yeah, I lightened everything but up. But <laughs> that same spot. Oh my gosh. Now my P spot is a Pink gray spot. spot. Yeah. So oh I, gosh. oh, so sad, you guys. I was super oh. duper sad about this because I was like, I loved the colors. The texture of this the is amazing. The texture. And my roommate, my previous roommate, he's like, oh, I actually love it. I'm like, no, you're not. No one's hanging this up anywhere. So I had one idea. Well, uh -huh. before I did all of this, I should have just cut it apart and made pillows or something, right? Mm -hmm. Or I don't or know, just pieced it back together. I don't know. Applicate over it. <laughs> Someone's like, just put a big flower over that spot. I'm like, no, I don't do flowers on the quilt. A I mean, a heart. No. A heart. Okay, so this is epic fail. This is going to go in the epic fail. Did we get a good shot of it? Daddy, okay. Your, so your quilts, this quilt. <sighs> but you know what? I mean, haven't you learned so much from this? <laughs> so what we're going to talk about the lessons learned. Yes. S experiment with something small. Yes. <laughs> before you do a whole quilt that you really love. Mm -hmm. um, the quilting, I still, I mean, I love the quilting. Oh, I yeah. love the texture. I it love is. the way that the colors pop. I mean, I might. I have thought about just taking out that center row and that center row and putting it back together with just this one, maybe. Oh. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I do. Yeah, just taking but, that out and repiecing it. But... Uh, repiecing it, but then it's like some goofy. But you know what? No, I don't know. The lessons learned. The right? lessons learned. Yes. And doesn't so, everybody need a quilt that lives in the trunk of their car for emergencies? I have a lot of those. <laughs> I have trunk quilts already. Okay, so. Our question for you. Yeah. What would I do for our for our viewers? Yeah. yeah. Like, what should I do with this now? This is Johnny's conundrum. This is John. This is my conundrum. This is my quilting conundrum, literally. So, what should I do with it? Should I junk it? Should I hang it up? I thought I literally thought about just binding it, hanging it up as it is, as a lesson learned. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time I've actually shown it to anyone. Yeah. I mean, it is. I haven't. If you couldn't tell by our giggling when you opened it up, <laughs> we haven't we haven't seen this. They since haven't it left seen the it studio. since it left in yeah. a more pristine condition. Oh my but gosh. Um, yeah, no. so well, I'm asking for your suggestions. If you guys have anything to share, if you have any suggestions on what I could do with it, what I should do with it, I might. I actually look at it. This is one of those things too. I tell people, it, you're too close to the project. If mm -hmm. you're working on it and you're spending all this energy and time, you're too close. Put it away for five days. Pull it back out, and it's a new thing. So that's so this has been put away for probably six months. Yeah, at least. Yeah, longer if not a year. So put it away, pull yeah. it out another time, and say, oh, you know what? It's really not that bad. In this case, it really is that bad. It's really not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, it's that bad. We could fix that. Um, I mean, I could. There's nothing. What do you even do? I don't know. But you guys, I... it was fluorescent <laughs> yellow shining through in exactly one spot that looks like pee. So sorry for being gross. I apologize, you guys. That's yeah, too much for your yeah. Sunday morning or I don't know. I don't anyway. know. Christina, you got any suggestions for him? If it were my quilt, I would, if I had any more of this fabric left over, I would just piece it over the top of that and just um, stitch those half or eighth inch stitches right okay. over the top. Okay. And it would probably blend in a little bit more than the gray. Yeah. The nice gray. That's a good idea. Um, Thank maybe you. do two layers so that the gray doesn't pop <laughs> through. So, <laughs> so maybe do five layers of the thickest cotton white you can find so that the gray doesn't show through. Or Kim. or <laughs> maybe take one of these cool turquoise greeny colors uh -huh. and do a whole just <gasps> oh, square the whole in the center. center. Oh. 
and do the same thing and, and just quilt over because the top of it. Because as you can see, the color remover, the, when I did the color yeah, I remover, it, I mean, it pulled out. It was interesting what it did. Yeah, it's just funny how different things react. And I yeah. used a lot of different fabrics. I used some of those. Um, like the shot cottons. Right? Yeah, yeah. The wovens. Wovens by Pepper, the yeah. Pepper Cottons. Yeah. I'm like Pepper Corey, couldn't mm -hmm. remember her name. Yeah. What about a fabric marker? I don't know Ooh. if you could get a white one that would go Do over they gray. have a white fabric marker? Or you could get gray <laughs> and just add more random <laughs> spots <laughs> and make it a design element. I'm going to do gray you could, and just add it in you those could, places. You could write <gasps> something right in oh. there and make it your quilt label and say, and call it Lessons Learned and Ooh. write it in a big black Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I'd love to hear your suggestions, I folks. I want to bind it for you, though. Oh, you do? Because it's finished. Kim <laughs> loves to bind, and you heard her say it. So all right. I'll do it. I'll get then, some fabric. I actually need a trunk quilt for my car. If <laughs> no, you want to donate to the, the cause. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're still a little too attached. I'm to attached. I mean, I might just hang it up. Like, yeah. it's like not Honey, horrible I think right it's, now. I think it's kind of cool to see everything that you've tried. You And you've tried so many things that <laughs> That are like the no-nos, right? Like ble bleaching. <laughs> okay, so lessons learned. Don't try to dye your quilt with dye that you've never dyed before. Don't try that. Don't try to bleach your quilt with color remover because that's going to be hideous. What else can we say? Um, don't give up. Don't, don't give, up. give up. Don't quit don't trying. Don't give up. <laughs> it's a little song for you. Don't give up. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Anything so, else? I think the point of all of this is just try new things, yeah. maybe on a smaller scale, on something that you're not as attached to, but have yeah. fun. Have Reach fun. out there. Get yep. your get your friends together and giggle over your mistakes <laughs> and move on and figure out know? ways to solve those mistakes. Yeah. 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 Love it. But we look forward to hearing all of your comments and suggestions for Johnny. And I'm excited to see how many people ask for you to send the quilt to them. Oh, okay. <laughs> no one is getting a free trunk quilt for their car. Sorry. <laughs> You're um, <already> trying. <laughs> but we'd also love to see in the comment section or in a separate post that like show us your quilting conundrum, mm -hmm. like hashtag quilting conundrum. I don't know if we've been used that, if that's been used yet. So, I don't think so. we'll look at that quilting conundrum. Yep. So yep. we'd love to see your quilting conundrums in the comments as well. Yeah. Ask us questions. Yeah. And Maybe we'll highlight send us <laughs> Yeah, send us an email. <laughs> With pictures. We love pictures. Yeah, we'll yes. share your conundrum. All right, well, I think we'll say thanks for joining us. Be sure and give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And be sure to have fun quilting this week.